What's up, guys? As always, don't forget to check out Lights Out Podcast, Chris Lytle's podcast. He's got all kinds of cool people on there, MMA legends, guys from back in the day, telling the history of the sport. Um, it's awesome. I'm stuck on it. I listen to it every day. And don't forget to check out my show, High Kick Fight Picks. We're available on Spotify, Pandora, iTunes, Rumble, YouTube, all that. Don't forget to check us out. What's up, guys? Here to go over UFC Vegas 71. Peter Yan versus Marab Dashvili. Uh, UFC 285 hasn't happened yet. Just coming off of uh, UFC Vegas 70 a couple days ago. Uh, I had a play on Trevor Peak hit. had a play on Mike Mallett hit. And the play on Andre Muniz didn't hit, of course. He proved that he uh, doesn't have anything off of his back at all. It's kind of the reverse of what I thought was going to happen in that fight. You know, uh, Brendan Allen showed to have a better ground game than Muniz, and Muniz was actually out striking Allen in the second round. Uh, but yeah, he didn't even try to get up once he was on his back. It was rather disappointing. So I guess that goes to show that uh, those quick submissions don't mean as much as you thought. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was a bad choice for me to put a play on that guy. Luckily, I added that Trevor Peak play right before the fight started because I had a play on Darius Flowers. That one, that fight got canceled. I had a play on Jose Johnson. That fight got canceled. So I took all that money from both of those and put it on Trevor Peak, and he came through. So that's the only reason I was able to make any money because otherwise my Mike Mallett and uh, Andre Muniz bets would have canceled each other out. So... At least I, at least I came out with a little bit of profit there for sure. And uh, let's get into this card, man. Let's start down here at the bottom. Uh, we got Cedriquez Cidri- Dumas taking on Joshua Fremd. Cedriquez is a really exciting fighter. Looking forward to seeing seeing this fight. Uh, Cedriquez is twenty seven years old. He's six two with a seventy nine inch reach. He's seven and zero, and this is going to be his UFC debut. Uh, he beat a really good kickboxer on uh, Dana White's Contender Series. Uh, he's got nasty kicks, uh, you know, to all levels. He's got finishes by leg kicks, by head kicks, by liver kicks. Really impressive there. Um, you know, he's a great striker. He, he uses his reach and height very well. Uh, he fights, you know, very long if that makes sense. Uh, very technical, and he's got pretty good grappling as well. You know, surprisingly, and and good submissions. Uh, he used that nice, you know, standing high elbow uh, guillotine to get a finish on the contender series. You know, he's only seven and zero, but you know, he's got a ton of amateur experience as well. Um, really impressed with this guy. I uh, can't wait to see how he's going to hold up in the UFC. You know, taking on a little bit of tougher, tougher competition, and you know, he's going to have a two and a half, uh, two and a half inch reach advantage in this spot, uh, which is surprising because he's going to be two inches shorter than Joshua Fremd. <clears throat> But uh, Joshua Fremd is 29 years old. He's 6'4 with a 76 and a half inch reach. He's 9 and 4, and he's 0 and 2 in the UFC. And uh, you know he hasn't had an easy go of it in the UFC. His uh, his debut was against Anthony Hernandez. You know he's a beast, so you can't really fault him for that much. Um, you know, but he lost to Treshawn Gore after that, and uh, then he got and Gore got knocked out by Cody Brundage, which you know I, I was thinking Gore was pretty much out of there after that, but, uh, you know, it wasn't a very good look, but, you know, so he's a big guy, you know, he has decent striking, but he showed to have trouble with the, with the grappling and with the submission awareness defense. Um, you know, I honestly think Dumas is better everywhere the fight goes here. Uh, his easiest, you know, route to victory is going to probably be the takedowns and the subs, but I'm going to say Dumas wants to make a statement and is probably going to come out here and try to get a knockout in round one. And that's the, that's what I'm going to go with on that one. Next up, we got, I believe, Davey Grant, Rafael Sunsau. Looking forward to this fight. Uh, Rafael Sunsau is 40 years old. He's 5'5 with a 66 and a half inch reach. He's 27 and 9, and he's 12 and 6 in the UFC. Uh, he's been in the UFC since 2011, and you know, he's always been kind of close to that top 15 area, top 10. You know, he had a bit of a rough skid where he lost four fights in a row. Uh, but this is a guy who, you know, has a win over the current champ uh, and Rob Bond as well. So, really impressive. 
you know, he's he's a good veteran with all the skills. Uh, you know, he's 40 years old now. But, uh, you know, he had a good showing last time out against Victor Henry as a big underdog. Um, he's a really good counter fighter. That's kind of what he was doing, was letting Vic Victor chase him down, and he was just countering him. Catched him with, you know, two or three shots to Victor's one. And uh, yeah, he switches stances very well. You know, he moves back and forth so that he gets the good angles, you know, on you whenever uh, whenever you're on the center line. Uh, he can catch. He can catch you. Uh, you know, he's pretty fast with the with his punches. He has good head movement. Uh, he's going to be giving up the height and reach advantage here, though, to Davy Grant. So I think that could actually be quite a factor in this fight. Uh, Davy Grant is 37 years old. He's 5'8 with a 69 inch reach, and he is 12 and six and five and five in the UFC. So I'm a big Davy Grant fan. Uh, he's a guy that, in my opinion, has turned over a new leaf in his career. Um, you know, he's he's had a couple of losses recently, but this is a guy who knocked out Jonathan Martinez. We all know that you know Jonathan Martinez is really good. Uh, Davey also went to a split decision with Adrian Yanez, and he's you know on fire right now. Uh, so these are all things that are very impressive. And you know, in his last fight, he ran through Luis Smoka, you know, like he didn't belong in the UFC. Uh, he's an excellent striker. He's got heavy hands, uh, heavy leg kicks, great counters. He does uh, you know good spin attacks, good front kicks. He, uh, you know, he hides those spin attacks like really well because he's always switching stances. So he'll switch stances a few times and then throw that spin and kick, you know, so you kind of don't see it coming half the time. Uh, you know, he's got fast combinations. Um, you know, he's, what's tricky about him is he, he's always got an angle, you know, when he lands a big shot. It's never like straight down the pipe. It looks like he's, you know, it looks like he's on the center line, but then he curls and twists you in like a big shot. Uh, you know, he's got a great amount of volume. Uh, he has three finishes by submission on his record. So I would say that maybe his submission defense might be the weakest part of his game. But I don't really think that's true because, I mean, by all accounts on what I've seen and heard, what other people have said and people who have trained with him and everything, they say he's very well-rounded. You know, he just loves to strike. So I'm going to be going with Grant here by knockout. I'm going to say it round two. And uh, that's one of my more confident picks on the card. I really like what I've been seeing out of Davey Grant. You know, he doesn't look like he's been slowing down one bit. At all, you know. Uh, so next up, we got Carlston Harris taking on a book a book bar. Let's just call him a boo <laughs> Uh Carlston Harris is thirty five years old. He's six foot with a seventy six inch reach. He's seventeen and five, and he's two and one in the UFC with his uh, his only loss being to Shavkat Rachmanov. So you know, no shame there. Um, you know, he's really good. People are high on him, so high on him. In fact, that Tapology picks are favoring him over Anirmaga Medov. You don't see that very much nowadays. Um, he's got pretty good body lock takedowns, uh, good submissions, good power. You know, I think the guys he beat aren't in the UFC anymore is one thing I did notice, though. Um, but I think he gave Shavkat the most problems out of anyone that he's faced yet. Um, you know, he his wins in the UFC have all been in the first round, so, you know, we don't really know how well his cardio holds up in the later rounds. Uh, and he is going to have a three-inch reach advantage here. And uh, Abu Nurmagomedov is 33 years old, 5'11", with a 73-inch reach. He's 17-3-1, and, and he's 2-1 and one in the UFC, with his loss being to uh, David Zawada by triangle choke, which isn't a good look. Uh, <laughs> it's funny how some of these, um, you know, these high-level Russian and Dagestani guys will come in and They'll drop one fight by making one stupid mistake, you know, and they never do it again. Kind of like, you know, Ankalaya did with Paul Craig. Um, he's got good takedowns and grappling, of course. You know, as far as striking goes, I would say uh, Harris has the advantage. You know, he fights behind his jab real well. Um, you know, he's been using more kicks. Um, I would say he's shown to have more trouble than everybody else with that last name, but ultimately has found a way to, you know, to fight his fight and get the wins. This is actually a tough fight to pick. You know, I'm I'm sure Harris will have, you know, success early. But, you know, Abu's probably, will probably eventually get the takedowns, you know. So, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on it. Everybody's going with Harris, and I can see why. Just I'm not in a, you know, a habit of betting against Nurmagomedovs, even though this guy, you know, everyone thinks he's not as good as all the other guys, but... I'm going to I'm going to say that, you know, Boo ends up getting the takedowns um and ends up getting a decision, although I'm not very confident and I wouldn't put put this guy in a parlay or anything cuz Harris is really tough. 
Um, but I'm going to go with, you know, the guy that I feel like probably has the wrestling advantage, even though Harris is pretty good too. Uh, so I'm going to pick um, Abu to win by decision. So next up we got, this is a good fight, Tony Gravely taking on Victor Henry. And uh, Tony Gravely is 31 years old, 5'5 five, five with a 69-inch reach. He's 23-8, and eight, and he's 4-3 and three in the UFC. So Tony's got a good wrestling background, very decorated wrestler before making the switch to MMA. He's got good boxing. He's got pretty heavy hands. Um, he's knocked a lot of guys out. You know, the only thing that I can say against him is he does tend to slow down quite a bit as the fight goes into the last round, the later rounds. Um, other than that, aside from getting a little wild sometimes when he has someone hurt, there's not a whole lot of holes in his game. Uh, you know, he's, he has great ground and pound. He has a good, uh, good first. He had a good first round finish or a first round against Basarat, not finish. <laughs> he didn't beat, he didn't beat Basarat, but he had a good first round against him. I think he won that round and, you know, Basarat is undefeated and, you know, very talented guy. So, you know, I won't fault Tony too much for that loss. Everybody's, you know, losing to that guy now, but. You know, Tony will have a reach of inch, uh, a, an inch reach advantage. Sorry, <laughs> in this fight, and um, you know he's he's got good boxing. Uh, he's really explosive. You know he he usually does get the takedowns. You know in the first round, um, you know and and he just like I said he does slow down a lot. And I I kind of want to pick him here. I want him to win. I'm going to be rooting for Tony Gravely for sure. Uh, but he's taking on Victor Henry, uh, 35 years old, five seven with a 68 inch reach. Um, he's 22 and six and one and one in the UFC. And you know, I don't really know what to, you know, think of this guy, make a victor here. Cause he came in on short notice and looked really good against Ronnie Barcelos. And then he looked horrible against Rafael Sunsau, who I considered not as good as Barcelos. Um, maybe he just had the, the better game plan. Um, he's trained by Josh Barnett. He has pretty clean striking. You know, he doesn't wind up on his shots. Um, you know, he has, you know, like, short technical strikes. He keeps up a good pace. He'll pressure, you know, his opponents and, and wear them down. Uh, he's got a catch wrestling background. He has good head movement. You know, he puts out puts out a ton of volume. And honestly, if the sun, a Sun Sal fight hadn't happened, I would have I would have picked Henry, you know, without a thought and probably put money on him. But, uh, and I'm still going to, um, I'm still going to pick Henry. Um even though I, I want Tony, no, Tony to win, I think Tony will have a good first round and hopefully a good second, you know, because I don't see Victor finishing Tony. But uh, if he doesn't finish Henry, Henry will probably take over in the later rounds, unfortunately. I'm going to be rooting for Tony, but I'm going to pick Henry uh, to win by, you know, volume in the in the last two rounds unless Tony gets that finish in the first round. Maybe live bet Victor Henry, you know, uh, after the first after the first round. After Tony's been winning the first round, hop on him then. Maybe he'll take over. Maybe he can win some more money that way. Uh, there's a lot of good fights on this card. I'm really looking forward to to a lot of these. Uh, this next one, really, because I'm really impressed with these two guys. Tyson Nam taking on Bruno Silva. Uh, Tyson Nam, you know, he's 39 years old, but he hasn't shown any, you know, shown any, any, uh, any hints of slowing down or anything. He's really trying to get in there a lot now. After he had that injury, he was out for a while, so... These are two guys that have been uh, knocking a lot of guys out in the flyweight division recently, so that's impressive. Uh, so Tyson Nam is 39 years old, 5'7", with a 68-inch reach. He's 21, 12, and 1. He had a long career before he got to the UFC, you know, and he's 3-3 three and three in the UFC. This is another guy I've become a big fan of. You know, um, he cashed as a big underdog last time out when he knocked out Odie Osborne. Um, he's a pretty big flyweight. And uh, this is a really good match, uh, good matchmaking here. Um, I like both these guys. You know, he he has a great right hand. You know, he goes to the body often. Um, you know, the way he stands, he's, like, really well balanced and helps him throw a lot of power into his shots. He also avoids shots well. Um, you know, he stays really calm in the pocket. You know, his opponents can usually be quite a bit faster than him, but he just he stays in the pocket and covers up well. And he can counter real well and land that big punch. Um, but he'll move in and out, you know, till he gets the timing and gets a feel for what you're gonna gonna, gonna be throwing, and then he'll set up that right hand. You know, he, like I said, he is 39, so I think he's like I said, he's trying to get in there and get a lot of wins as quick as he can. Um, I've got a lot of respect for this guy. You know, he's had a very long career, 
and uh, you know, he's still out here knocking guys out. Uh, you know, in the in the flyweight division, so he's going to have two inches of reach in this spot, and I think that could help him. <clears throat> um, so he's taking on Bruna Silva. He is 32 years old, five four with a 66 inch reach. Um, he's 12 five and two, and two and two in the UFC. And I'm a fan of this guy as well. So you know, he, both of these guys have had kind of like rough starts to their UFC career. They came in and got a couple losses against tough guys, but have come around and made some statements. You know, Silva has knocked out his last two opponents. He has good boxing. He's super fast, really powerful and explosive. You know, he's also a really good wrestler and grappler. He's got great jiu-jitsu. Um, he throws good calf kicks. Uh, so Silva will have the speed advantage here. And I think Nam is going to be uh, the way bigger guy here. You know, looking at it, I would say they, they both have fought pretty tough competition, you know, in their first two fights in the UFC. So I can't really say anybody's fought the better guys. Um, um, I think Silva's going to have the grappling advantage as well. So this is a much closer fight than people are making it out to be. Because everybody on Tapology is going with, you know, with Nam. I'm going with Nam. But uh, I believe Bruno Silva is a big favorite, and I understand why, you know. Um, I notice that Bruno gets pretty tired, you know, in the third round usually. He's pretty pretty, pretty tired by then. Um, I'm going to be taking Nam here. I think it's kind of his time to shine, you know, but nobody should be counting out Bruno here. I'm going to say Nam by KO, maybe the first round. I think it could play out a lot like that. Um, which fight was that? What was that guy's name? Uh, Zaruk Adeshev fight. You know, that guy was just run, rushing in at Nam, and Nam caught him with that big big punch just a few seconds into the fight. So uh, I'm thinking maybe it could turn out like that, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if Silva uses his grappling and, uh, you know, gets a, gets a win that way. Next up, we got Mario Batista taking on Guido Canetti. Um, Batista is 29 years old, 5'9", with a 69-inch reach. Uh, he's 11-2 and two and 5-2 and two in the UFC. You know, he's on a roll right now. He's got good wrestling. He's a very powerful striker. Um, he's got nasty ground and pound. He's going to be better here everywhere the fight goes, I believe. I'm not spending too much time on this one because, uh, I mean, he's got the advantage everywhere. I mean, I think we all know this. <laughs> uh, he's taking on Guido Canetti, who is 43 years old but still in great shape. Um, you know, he's 5'6 with a 68-inch reach, so Batista's going to have a one-inch reach advantage. Um, he's 10-6 and six and 4-5 and five in the UFC. You know, I mean, the only the only chance he's really got here is landing that big shot, and he does have that big shot, but, you know, um, there's always a chance, you know, he could uh, he could win, but I got to go with the guy here who's more well-rounded, more ways to win. I think Mario gets a finish in this fight, probably by sub, uh, second round. Um you know, uh, I think he's probably going to be pretty smart. He's probably going to wind up taking Kennedy down instead of letting Kennedy, you know, wear him down a bit before before he he starts really messing with him because he does have that big power. You know, I can't I can't say he doesn't because he he's coming off of a couple wins here. He's got got a submission win over Randy Costa. I believe he rocked him first, but everybody's beating Randy Costa now. And Chris Martino, that's not a tough tough fight, unfortunately for Chris. Um, he just it couldn't get anything going in the UFC, but. Uh, next up, we got J.J. Aldridge taking on Ariana Lipsky. And uh, <laughs> uh, J.J. Aldridge is 30 years old, 5'5", uh, five, five with a 67 and a half inch reach. And um, she's 11 and 5 and 7 and 4 in the UFC. And uh, this is another one that you know, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on, you know, JJ has really good striking and good enough takedown defense to keep Lipsky from getting her down. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to be thinking that, you know, JJ outboxes Lipsky for three rounds here in this fight. Um, you know, I like, uh, the queen of violence. I'm a fan of hers, but you know, she's had a rough, rough go of it lately. Um, <laughs> she is 29 years old, five, six with a 67 inch reach. She's 14 and 8 and 3 and 5 in the UFC. Uh, she's been finished with strikes three times in the UFC. You know, she's a pretty girl. Uh, I'm a fan. Um, and she's not a horrible fighter, but, you know, I just, I don't think she's going to be able to, to outbox, you know, JJ here or, or get her down, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm going to be taking, you know, JJ by decision here. JJ hasn't really been finishing, you know, uh, 
anybody. So it's all over wins or split decisions. She's <clears throat> coming off a tough loss to Aaron Blanchfield, but we all know Blanchfield's really good after what she did to Andrade. So, but yeah, Lipsky had got knocked out by, you know, Cachoeira, Montana De La Rosa, and Tina Shevchenko. You know, so I would say that if JJ really wants to, she could use her uh, ground game probably because that's how all three of those fights went. She, she was taken down and beaten with ground and pound. But I'll be rooting for her. <laughs> Next up, we got Lukas Breski taking on Carl Williams. This is a fight that I'm, I was a little bit upset because I couldn't really find all the info on Bresky that I needed to to make a real good decision. So if anybody's got a got a hot tip, you know, or whatever for me that they know that Bresky's got good wrestling and a good ground game, uh, please holler at me and let me know because I was considering a bet on Bresky in this spot. But uh, so Bresky is thirty years old. He's six four with a seventy eight. Point three reach. I don't know why they're so specific on those. Um, he's eight two and one and zero and one in the UFC. You know, this is a guy that I really like. Um, he lost to Martin Bidet in his debut, which is a really big guy. You know, it wasn't really actually. I thought he won that fight. You know, it was a super close fight. Um, I remember I had Martin in a parlay, and I I, I thought he was going to lose that fight for sure because um, he got outstruck in all three rounds by Bresky, I believe. Um, you know, Bresky kind of took over in the third, but I thought for sure, or uh, Bidet took over in the third. I thought Bresky won the first two rounds. Um, but, uh, yeah, he really made a good account of himself. You know, he showed uh, to have really good striking. You know, he's fast for a heavyweight. He's got good kicks. You know, he's got heavy hands. uses his jab really well. He landed over 40 strikes in the first three minutes of that fight, so that's kind of a lot, you know, for a heavyweight. Most heavyweights aren't putting out that kind of volume that he did. I'm curious to see if he, uh, you know, ever tries to go down the light heavyweight because I think he could do it, and I think he would look pretty good at that weight class. Um, you know, he would be a pretty big guy for that weight class. So um, I really like to see. Uh, I really like what I've seen out of this guy. You know, but the thing is, I couldn't find much on him as far as you know any any tape on you know him using a ground game or wrestling or whatever. You know, he's a big guy. I'm sure he's not easy to take down, but. Uh, he's taking on Carl Williams. He is 33 years old, 6'3", with a 79-inch reach. He's 7-1, and one, and this is going to be his UFC debut. Uh, so, you know, he seems to have good wrestling. You know, he was throwing a much bigger guy around on the Contender Series fight that, that he just had. Um, I've been struggling to find out, like I said, if Bresky could wrestle. Okay, wasn't able to find much. Uh, so I, I was, I was going to pick him, and I was going to bet on him. But, um, unfortunately... Uh, I don't know. I don't have that answer, so I can't give that advice to y'all without without the the concrete proof that he's got something there, you know. Um, but uh, you know, uh, Williams is gonna have to have to get the takedowns to win this fight. Um, I want Bresky to win. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Williams just because he has shown to have good wrestling, good takedowns for heavyweight, and uh, you know, no money on this one, but and you know. <laughs> If anybody knows, like I said, uh, let me know because I was considering an underdog bet on Bresky. But Carl Williams is pretty good. He's got fast striking as well. Um, not as high a volume as Bresky, but either way, y'all let me know if y'all know because I, I don't have a reason. But I, I do think he might have been on roids uh, at one point, Bresky. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, they added the Nikhil Krylov fight to this card. Real quick. I forgot that they added it. Let me go back. Pull my notes out for that one and see what all I had. I know I already did this, you know, the fight on this video, but uh, if y'all want, y'all could go back and watch it. But either way, um, so we got uh, Nikita Krylov. He is 30 years old. 6'3 with a 75 and a half inch reach, or 77 and a half inch reach, my bad. Um, and he is 29 and 9. Let's look at his uh, UFC record. 
and he is 10 and 7 in the UFC. Um, you know, he's had a long career. He was in the UFC and he came back. He's fought nothing but, you know, the top guys. He's fought several, you know, champions that, you know, he he, he lost to Jan Bolcevich. Um, you know, he, he choked out Owen St. Peru. He lost a split decision, a close fight to Glover Teixeira. He beat Johnny Walker. He had a good first round against Magomed and Kalaev. Um, he was destroying Paul Craig before he made a dumb decision and stuck his head in a triangle. Knocked out Alexander Gustafson and then beat Volkan Ozdemir by decision. This fight was supposed to happen this weekend. It didn't happen. Um, I think Nikita Krylov is up, definitely up on a level, you know, like with Anthony Smith, who destroyed Ryan Spann. Um, and he's fought the better competition. He's more well-rounded. He's a better wrestler. He's got better takedowns. He's gonna need to. He's gonna need to try and control Span up against the cage or get him down in the first round. If uh, if Span can't get his hands on him in the first round, uh, you know he's gonna pull through because that's usually Span's deal. You know, knock out or bust first round. Uh, Ryan Span is 31 years old, six five with an 81 and a half inch reach. He's gonna have a good bit of reach here. He's uh, 21 and seven, and uh, he is. Seven and two in the UFC. You know, his record looks pretty good, but yeah. <laughs> he got destroyed by Anthony Smith. Um, show did not have much of a ground game there. Um, he got knocked out by Johnny Walker. That's somebody that Nikita Krylov beat. Um, you know, this win over Dominic Reyes, I don't put a whole lot of stock in that because, you know, I, I hate saying that stuff about Reyes because I'm a big fan of his, but it appears that, you know, his chin is, is has left him. So, unfortunately... And uh, Ian Kutalaba, who hasn't put him in a guillotine choke and choked him out recently. Everybody he's fought, I think, has done that. He might have lost three fights in a row by guillotine. I don't remember. Two, at least two. Sorry, I had to get some water. Um, now, Spans, you know, he's explosive. He's got big power. He's a big guy, for sure. Um, I just got to go with a more skilled guy. You know, I know, there's, I know he can land that big shot, um, but... Volkan Oldemir hit Nikita Krylov with some big shots, had him wobbled in the first round, and he was able to persevere and come back and get that victory. So uh, I think he's going to be able to do the same thing here. Wouldn't be surprised if Span he did get a knockout. These are big guys, but I got to go with the more talented guy, the more well-rounded guy, Nikita Krylov. Um, I'm going to say he wins by a second or third round submission, just like uh, kind of like he did with. Uh, Who was that that he choked out? <laughs> I had to go back and look now because that just left me. Sorry, it's early in the morning, guys. I'm still drinking my coffee and doing this uh, like he did with Ovin St. Pru. You know, um, he's got a lot of submissions on his record, actually, if you look at it. Quite a few. But yeah, I'm taking Nikita Krylov in that spot. And that's cool that they added it so quickly. Okay, next up we got Austin Lingo taking on Ricardo Ramos. And uh, this is actually going to be a good fight, and um, looking forward to it. Really, I, I kind of it kind of doesn't make sense to me because Ricardo Ramos has been around so long, and you know he's fought a lot of tough guys. So I, I'm kind of confused as to why Austin's getting the fight with him, you know, so soon. But maybe they think pretty highly of Austin. I mean, I do I like his boxing, but uh, Ricardo Ramos is 27 years old, five nine with a 72 inch reach. He is 16 and four and seven and three in the UFC. He's been around a while. He's a vet. Um, Ramos is very good. You know, he's will, he's really well rounded. Um, he throws a lot of crazy spinning elbows, you know, and stuff. He, he's landed those. He's got a few finishes like that on his record, but he goes for that a little bit too much, in my opinion. Uh, he's got good jujitsu. He's got pretty good takedowns, and he throws a lot of unorthodox kicks and spin kicks, you know, which can waste a lot of energy. I mean, he is fun to watch, though. I do notice that he slows down quite a bit, you know, in the fight um, after, you know, throwing all these crazy spins and all this stuff like that for the first two rounds. But um, yeah, he is the more well-rounded guy for sure. Um, probably, I don't know if his striking's better than Austin Lingo's, his boxing anyway, but he, those, those crazy things that he throws that could, could put, you know, Austin on his heels and have him, you know, a little bit scared to go into the pocket or whatever, but... So, Austin Lingo, fighting out of a good gym, fighting out of Fortis, Fortis, Fortis MMA, not too far from where uh, 
where I live. Uh, you know, maybe a 30, 40 minute drive from, from my house. But uh, Austin Lingo is 28 years old. He's 5'10 with a 70 inch reach. He's 9 and 1 and he's 2 and 1 in the UFC. Um, he stole my buddy Chris Lytle's nickname, Lights Out. <laughs> Wonder if he's a fan of Chris Lytle's or if that's just something they came up with. Um, and I really like Lingo's boxing. Um, you know, uh, he keeps his hands right at his chin when he's not throwing, so he's got good defense. He's He's got fast hands. He's got big power. You know, he uses his jab well. Uh, he'll double it up sometimes, um, and he throws, like, you know, four or five punch combinations sometimes, and he really pressures guys with it. He's got good cardio. You know, he'll push a, a very tough pace on guys, um, and, you know, he'll go forward and eat a lot of shots in the first round, but then he'll just keep coming and coming and coming, and eventually, you know, he's – He's going to wear you down. That's what he did in his last fight against Luis Saldana. Saldana kind of reminds me of the way, you know, Ricardo Ramos, you know, throws all these crazy big spinning attacks. And, you know, he caught Lingo with a good kick in the first round and busted Lingo up with a couple of big shots. But Lingo just kept coming and coming and just pressuring and pressuring, you know, and just ran uh, Luis Saldana down and was able to outland him in the last two rounds and beat him up pretty bad. So that was a pretty good, pretty good uh, win there. Um you know, honestly, everything points to Ramos winning probably with his grappling or, you know, throwing on a slick submission or something. But for some reason, my gut instinct is telling me Lingo is going to, you know, wear him down, run him down, you know, use his boxing and bust him up. Um, either catch him with a big shot or out volume for, you know, the later rounds of the fight. So I'm going to be taking Lingo by decision. He's a big underdog. Um, I'm probably going to have him, you know, mixed into some mixed into some big parlays or something, the ones I make. I, I make those parlays, and I don't post them because they almost never hit. Usually there's always one person that screws them up. So <laughs> maybe it's Austin Lingo this this week. I don't know. But I do, uh, I'm do. i a big fan of Austin Lingo. So I like his style, and I like his pressure and his boxing. Uh, next up, we got Vitor Petrino taking on Anton Turkal. Turk <laughs> Uh, let's just call him Anton. Uh, Victor Petrino is 25 years old. He is 6'2 with a 77 and a half inch reach. Um, he is 7 and 0. This is UFC debut. Uh, the first thing I noticed looking at his record is he's only fought two guys with any experience. Uh, one of the guys he fought was one in 17, so not a lot of experience, and hasn't fought the best competition. Um, he's a big, powerful guy. He's got fast hands. He can be pretty wild. Um, not really sure based on what I've seen if he has good cardio. Um, he definitely has good ground and pound, pretty good top control. Um, you know, I saw him work his way out of a couple of submissions and reverse a guy who had his back, uh, but not sure on the cardio. Um, he has a bunch of quick finishes on his record, so it's kind of hard to know based off that what happens You know, if he goes into the third round. So. And Anton is 26 years old, 6'4", with a 78-inch reach. He's only going to have a half-inch reach here. Um, he's 8-1, and one and he's 0-1 in the UFC. His debut was against Jolton Almeida. You know, he's probably going to be a champ one day, so um, I can't I can't fault him for that loss. Uh, I do like this guy's nickname, <laughs> The Pleasure Man. A <laughs> little weird, uh, but whatever. It's cool. <laughs> Uh, so he's definitely more experienced. He's got a long amateur career, you know, as well. He's got a lot of submission wins on his record, you know, and he's gonna have to he's gonna have a grappling advantage here, I believe. I mean, you know, what he does is he takes big guys down and he wears on them, and then he tries to submit them, you know, or just wear them down for three rounds. And you know, uh, can he do it here? You know, I'm I'm kind of struggling with this one to make a choice because uh, Victor is a big, you know, big powerful guy. Um, but we don't really know if he can grapple at all, you know, or if he's fought anybody that can really grapple much. Um, you know, I like to I like to go with people who have a grappling advantage usually. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I just don't know if Anton's going to be able to get that big strong guy down. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm I'm going to take Anton. Um, I guess I'm going to take Anton, even though you know he's. He gets hit quite a bit, so I wouldn't be surprised if he got knocked out. Um, he kind of runs into a lot of punches whenever he's going in to try and, you know, clinch and try to get the takedowns. But I'm going to pick him. He's a big guy. He's he's taking down a lot of big guys, so I'm going to pick him to get the win. Uh, 
but I wouldn't be surprised if he got knocked out. <laughs> I'd probably stay away from this fight. Um, so uh, next up, we got Saeed Numargamedov taking on Jonathan Martinez. I love this matchup. Uh, man, <laughs> this one's hard for me, for sure. Grab some water real quick. So, um, Sayed Nemargamedov is 30 years old. He is 5'8 with a 70-inch reach. He's only going to have a half-inch reach advantage here. He's 17-2 seven and, and, and 6-1 six and one in the UFC. He's got a real good record. Um, he's really, real, really well-rounded. The only things that I can say really against him is he's usually pretty gassed out by the third round. If you go back and watch the Douglas Silva de Andrade fight, you know, in his last fight, even though he was losing in that last fight, um, you know, he was getting handled quite quite well by Kokromanov. But, uh, you know, he ended up getting that choke in. But he was super gassed, you know. And that fight ended in the second round, I believe, uh, when he got that choke. But he was super gassed because, you know, Kokromanov was just putting the pressure on him, you know. Um, <laughs> and, you know, he throws a lot of big crazy strikes that burn up his energy. That could part, be part of the reason he slows down. Um, he is an amazing striker, though, you know, especially in the first round. Um, he is a good grappler, but he's not, he's, he's not that he, he really doesn't choose to fight that way most of the time. He does tend to strike and stuff, you know, um, it's kind of a little bit different than all the other, you know, Nurmagomedovs and stuff, all the other OVs from over there. <laughs> uh, but, uh, he's really good and he's really impressive and, uh, he's taking on Jonathan Martinez. He is 28 years old, 5'8", with a 69 and a half inch reach. He's 17 and four and eight and three in the UFC, and I really love this guy's striking um, as well. And he has really, really good strong calf kicks, uh, which I can see being a factor in this fight. And I'm kind of biased because you know I've been winning money with Martinez in his last four fights. You know, um, he's not the best grappler, but he does always find his way back to his feet. And I can see this fight playing out quite a bit closer than most people think. Uh, you know, I would say if Martinez gets the win, it's probably by like a third round stoppage. And uh, I really want to pick Martinez because <laughs> I've been riding with him. You know, I've also been riding with Nurmagomedov too, but, you know, uh, man, I want to pick Martinez, but I got to go with Nurmagomedov. <laughs> I'm going to be rooting for Martinez, though, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of Martinez. So. <clears throat> Next up, we got Alexander Volkov taking on Alexander Romanov. And, uh, Volkov is 34 years old, 6'7", with an 80-inch reach. He's going to have a 5-inch reach advantage in this spot. He's 35-10 and 10 overall, and he is 9-4 and 4 in the UFC. And, you know, he's coming off a knockout over Jarzinho Rosenstruck. Um, he had a straight arm lock loss to Tom Aspinall before that. Um, and so, he's, I mean, I really like Alexander, Roman, uh, Alexander Volkov. He's got good cardio. He could have better volume, but he's a super big guy. You know, um, he actually has pretty good takedown defense. Um, and basically what this fight comes down to is, and the reason that I'm making the choice that I'm making, is that uh, <clears throat> Alexander Romanov is 32 years old, 6'2", with a 75-inch reach, and he has one-round cardio. So he goes out and he destroys people in the first round. And if he doesn't destroy people in the first round, you know, <laughs> he, uh, he get, he's gassed. And that's how he lost his last fight to Marcin Tabora. You know, he was winning the first round, and after that he had nothing the next two rounds. Same thing was happening to him in the Juan Espino fight, even though, you know, he took a low blow and refused to continue. And uh, they gave the fight to him because he was winning up to that point, but... He was gassed out there, so he's kind of been exposed there. And, uh, you know, I'm picking Alexander Volkov to win. You know, it's pretty close to a pick him fight. And uh, I'm picking him because, you know, he's, I know he's got the cardio to go, you know, more than one round. And, uh, you know, I don't think, you know, Romanov is, you know, as good as Tom Aspinall and as fast and explosive, you know, as Tom Aspinall that when he took, you know, Volkov down and was able to get the straight arm lock. Um, there's a chance Romanov could get the submission in the first round, but you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, 
I'm going to go with, you know, Volkov kind of out cardio and Romanov and, and taking over in the second and third round. Or he could land a big shot in the first. You know, um, Romanov's never fought in a guy this big with that much reach. You know, um, yeah, Volkov's a really big guy, so I'm picking him to win the fight. And, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of his anyway. So next up, we got the main event taking on <laughs> Peter Jan taking on Marab Dvashvili. This is a really good match, Megan, here. Um, and I'm probably not going to be very popular for my pick on this. <clears throat> so, um, you know, Peter Jan is 30 years old. He's 5'7 with a 67 inch reach. He's 16 and 4. Let's take a look at his record real quick. He's 8 uh, and 3 in the UFC. And he's kind of had a lot of stuff, you know, not go his way, <laughs> you know, uh, in his last, you know, four fights or whatever. But uh, he is really good, man. And I, I'm a big fan of his. You know, honestly, I. Yeah, the the chant, the fight with Aljamain Sterling in the last one was was really close, so I can't I guess really argue that he won because he should have done done more and done better than in the earlier rounds, you know. Um, but he did eventually take over, and uh, and I I thought he won the last two rounds for sure, and maybe the third round, so it could have gone either way. And uh, and he had a super close fight with Sean O'Malley, which is not what I expected. Um, you know, he was I thought he won that fight, but you know the damage. You know, Sean O'Malley with basically one-off damage. Um, now it's kind of kind of tough to to go on, you know. But you know, the the thing is, is just that, man. I want to go with Jan, but <laughs> Marab is a uh, Marab is um, really good. You know, he's a uh, <laughs> he's thirty-two years old, five-six with a sixty-eight inch reach. Um, he's 15 and four and he is eight and two in the UFC. And, uh, you know, what are his losses in the UFC? Ricky Simone is a badass. Um, Frankie Sands, I don't even remember him. That was a long time ago. Uh, but, you know, Marab's really good. And, uh, you know, his game plan's the same every time. He's going to go out there. He's going to try to get the takedowns. He's going to pressure you up against the cage. And, uh, you know, the reason that I'm going to be picking Marab to win this fight is that I did see Peter Jan get taken down quite a few times uh, in his last his last couple fights, and uh, you know, and Marab is best friends with Aljamain Sterling, so you know, Aljamain's fought Peter Jan twice, um, you know, so I think they're going to have a pretty good game plan here, and uh, I think Marab's probably going to get the takedowns, either that or he's just going to control Jan up against the cage the whole time, but uh, I want Jan to win. But I actually think that uh, Marab's got a, a good chance here. He's an underdog. And he's not an underdog very often. So uh, I'm going to be picking him to win the fight. Uh, probably by probably by decision. I don't think he's going to finish Peter Yawn. <laughs> um, tough pick for me, man. I, I, I'm a big Peter Yawn fan. To me, he's still the champion, you know. But uh, I got to go with Marab here, man. He's been getting taken down. Uh, he does. We don't, we. I don't guess we really know what. I mean, Marab. I guess went. Did he go five rounds with Jose Aldo in his last fight? It was only three rounds. So we got to find out if uh, if Marab's going to be able to go the five rounds as well. So that's something to think about. But uh, yeah, my pick's going to be Marab for sure. <laughs> and uh, so as far as my bets go, guys. Uh, here we got so I got a my biggest play is going to be on Davy Grant at uh I got him at minus 150 and uh that's a uh, three unit play there and um I got a underdog small underdog play on Tyson Nam uh one unit and uh I got a small play on Devosh Billy one unit and uh, I'm considering a play on Volkov, um, but I'm not sure yet. But possibly I might end up having money on Volkov. And uh, now that I see they added the Nikita Krylov card, I'm considering a Krylov bet on that. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I haven't decided on those yet. But as far as right now, those are the bets that I got for this card. Um, 
once again, I appreciate all you guys. Please, uh, please like and subscribe. Don't forget. And um, I really appreciate it. I always enjoy talking to all you guys. You know, I've had people message me on Instagram and, and, you know, I'm always, I try to respond to everybody um, that reaches out to me you know, in the comments or, you know, on Instagram or whatever. I don't mind. I love chopping it up with you guys and talking about fights and stuff. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate all the support. And I've only been doing this for, you know, like, what, a month and a half. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm getting close to 100 subscribers. So that's, that's a big deal for me. You know, um, I had a lot of people I know kind of make me feel really stupid for wanting to do this, you know, <laughs> is, uh, this is something that I love, you know, my job sucks. I build houses, but, uh, this is something that I love to do. And, uh, and it's, it's cool to know that some people, you know, like to hear me out and like to hear my picks. So, um, thank you guys very much. Uh, appreciate you guys and I'll holler at y'all later, man. Y'all have a good one.